Today we're checking out the new Yi M1 mirrorless camera that can shoot 20 million pixels 4K video plus a touch screen. Hey guys, I'm Ben from Authentech. Now I've reviewed Yi's action cam before and it's really good, especially for the price. This is their first try at a micro four thirds mirrorless camera. So how well does it do? Well, inside the box is the main camera and lens. On the back is a three inch touchscreen display. On the right side is micro USB, SD card slot, and micro HDMI. On the bottom is the standard tripod mount and battery compartment. The included battery is 900 milliamp hours and can be recharged via the USB cable. They say the fully charge takes about three hours. And lastly on top, there's a hot shoe mount, a mode and control dial, shutter button, and power switch. Take the front cap off and you'll find the 20 megapixel image sensor. The lens mounting system is micro four thirds, which means there's plenty of lenses out there. And the kit lens that I received was 12 to 40 millimeter at 3.5 to 5.6. In hand, it feels pretty good. It has that vintage camera look, lightweight and compact design, though it is mostly made of plastics with a little rubber on the right hand grip. So let's go out shooting. It can capture in both JPEG or RAW. There's plenty of modes to select from. One of my favorite features of this camera is the touchscreen and how easy it is to adjust the exposure settings, simply tapping the screen and rotating the dial. If I want to change my focus point, I can just tap on the screen and it's very intuitive and easy for beginners. They also have manual focus peaking, which is great, plus a zoom in preview. Now reviewing photos is nice too. Click the playback button, scroll through your shots like a gallery app on your phone. You can even pinch to zoom in and out, check your image details, or use the control dial, zoom out, and view info on your photos like histogram and more. Now my overview thoughts on the photos is I'd rate it just okay. I mean, the images look nice and all, but nothing that just blows me away. Plus the autofocus system is pretty garbage, missing the shot too many times, and I'll touch more on this shortly. Now moving on a video, I captured some 4K test footage and I have to admit I was pretty disappointed here as well. I mean, I guess I was expecting something really amazing and instead it's basically just okay. I mean, I like that it has that focus peaking for pulling manual focus, custom white balance and those sort of controls. But one thing I just couldn't figure out when I switched to full manual exposure and started recording video, it switched to auto exposure and wouldn't lock in where I told it to. I also wish it had tap to focus while recording video, but it doesn't. And man, that autofocus is just so slow and inaccurate a lot of the time. Now, maybe you like those slow focus transitions, but when I'm used to my phone having lightning fast, razor sharp autofocus, and this dedicated camera is so much slower, that's pretty lame. Now for another video test, they have an anti-shake mode. You can't enable this in 4K, it needs to step down to 2K video. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison for you, as I went for a simple handheld walking test. In my opinion, they both look pretty shaky, and that built-in stabilization might be doing a little, but not a whole lot. There's other features in the menus like HDR, which is nice. I found these images to have that improved dynamic range, though it has some pretty rough haloing going on. Very noticeable in some images. There's a nice time-lapse mode, easy to set the interval and duration settings, and it'll auto-compile into a video for you. Panorama mode is nice too. Hit the shutter button to start, drag across your horizon, and it'll auto-stitch together. Another feature they boast is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You can connect to your phone with their app and remotely view your images. Okay, sure, this is nice if you want to download a high-res shot and share it on your social medias, but I was pretty bummed to find out that there's no live view or remote control of the M1 camera from the app. It can only view your shots already taken. This could have been a really nice feature. And a sidebar, it's kind of weird that their action cam already has this feature, but this more expensive mirrorless camera does not. I don't understand. Now here's a couple more wishlist items. I like the touch screen, but it feels a bit laggy and slow sometimes. It's not even as snappy as their action cam. I even found it froze up on me once while processing a panorama. I had to pull the battery to reset. Thankfully, after a recent firmware update, I haven't had that issue since. I wish it had live histogram on screen, touch to focus and video mode. Also, it'd be a huge feature if they included a tilting screen. This is nice to have for those different shooting angles or even be nice for those vloggers pointing it back on themselves. An articulating screen is an essential for a lot of shooters nowadays. Okay, so here's my final thoughts. Mirrorless is definitely blowing up the market right now. Just look at that Sony a7S Mark II. It's a phenomenal camera. 
For this one though, it's Yi's first try, and I'd say they need to get back to the drawing board and really step it up. And I totally get it, the price is a bit cheaper than most quality mirrorless out there, but in a day and age where my phone can capture beautiful still photos and killer 4K videos, and then to purchase a separate camera, it really needs to shine. And I don't think this one really cuts it yet, but Yi's killing it with their action cam. Their new one has that 4K at 60 FPS, so they're definitely not out of the game just yet. I'll be looking forward to what they can produce in Gen 2. Now, huge thanks to Gearbest for sending me the sample unit, and if you want to check out their current price, I'll give you the link down below. Now, consider subscribing if you haven't already for more tech videos like this every week, and until next time, let's live authentic. Thank you.